Warning, the following podcast contains profanity being interrupted by different profanity. This week's episode of The Scathing Atheist is brought to you by the new penis replacement system for gay men seeking conversion therapy. It's Fagatrol by Dickaderm. Our patented delivery system gives you a steady trickle of sodomy throughout the day so you can finally beat those cravings. And by the end of week six, you'll be getting nothing but the tip and you'll still feel great. And then you start wearing the snatch patch and you'll be well on your way to becoming a normal vagina loving man, just like God intended. And for lesbians, just follow the directions in reverse. It's perfect. Fagatrol. Thanks to Rifra, this is not a hate crime. And now, the scathing atheist. I heard a wild rumor that Noah was running low on Farnsworth quotes, and there hasn't been a single one in Finnish yet. I don't have anything to promote, and nobody would give a shit anyway because no one cares about Finland, so I'll just leave you with this. Me todellakin kehityimme saastaisista apinamiehistä. It's Thursday. It's September 15th. And if you don't stand for fat bottom girls, you can die of AIDS like Freddie Mercury did for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm no illusions. I'm Eli Bosnick. I'm Heath Enright. And from New York, New York and Secret Lair, Pennsylvania, this is The Scathing Atheist. On this week's episode, religious dunking booths go wrong three stories in a row. The GOP promotes the Zika virus, cervical cancer, and slavery all in one bill. And we find a charity that'll let us call people fat fucks for them again. But first, the diatribe. I've got my parents coming in for a few days at the end of the month. This will be the first time in my adult life that they've stayed in my house for any period of time. I, you know, they've come to see me here and there, but they've always hoteled it before. But this time I've got a guest bedroom for them, so I get to play host. And I don't mind saying I'm a little nervous about it. I guess I, I, I probably would be one way or the other, but my stress is compounded because up until now, I haven't exactly told them what I do for a living. See, when I started this show, the whole point of it was anonymity. I started blogging just to have a creative outlet, but I found that I was constantly censoring myself. You know, my parents and grandparents were reading this shit, as were a lot of the kids that knew me from the toy company I worked for at the time. So everything was PG, and I, I, I could never broach topics like religion or politics. And as you can imagine, that didn't stay fun for very long for me. So I gave it up, and I started using a pseudonym to say all the shit that I didn't want my mom to hear. And that was pretty easy to pull off when it was just some blog I was writing in my spare time. But when it became a podcast and a full-time job, it started to creep from omission to dishonesty. So in advance of their trip, I have to come clean. I have to tell my mom that I make my living ignoring her advice about what to do when I have nothing nice to say. So I'm sitting in my office the other day writing my mom a letter, spelling all of this out. Yes, handwriting a letter. I know I'm 106, but whatever. As I'm writing it, I pause and I start looking around the office. Now, at a glance, the words scathing atheist are visible in at least six places. I also have an atheist license plate that a friend and listener gave me. I have a, a shelf full of books with the word atheism in them. I, I have a, a, a few less than amicable bumper stickers and buttons hanging around. And from high atop the bookshelf, a buddy Christ bobblehead overlooks everything. So I, I look around and I think to myself, I should probably tone this down a bit before mom and dad get here. And then I hit myself with a stick because fuck me, a fucking course I shouldn't. Yeah, do, do religious people tone down their religious paraphernalia when atheists come to visit? If they do, I've never seen it. I, I, I you know, I mean, maybe my grandma-in-law usually has nine hundred Jesus figurines in her house, and she just hides four hundred of them when we come to see her. But I kind of doubt it. Hell, odds are better than fifty-fifty that my dad's going to show up wearing a Jesus T-shirt. Now, consider the double standard that exists here. I'm an atheist for a living, right? That, that, that's what I spend my days writing about, talking about, studying about. I, I, I know that we don't have preachers in atheism, but that's like my closest counterpart in the religious world. A person who is religious for a living. So imagine you walk into a preacher's home. You, you probably have at some point. How much Jesus shit did you see there? I mean, sure, I've got an atheist sticker on my car, a couple of atheist t-shirts, a bit of atheist memorabilia hanging around in my office. But how minor of a dusting is that compared to like your religious aunt's house? You know, imagine the atheist equivalent. My parents walk in, first thing they see is a giant picture of 
Darwin tending finches over the fireplace. Very conspicuous copy of the God Delusion sitting open on the coffee table. Another smaller one in the bathroom. Of course, I'm wearing my best bong hits for Jesus shirt. My wife is in her favorite hand-knitted, nothing-fails-like-prayer sweater. Big scarlet A on her necklace. Monster on Sundays playing over the speakers while A Better Life is on TV in the background. Little figurines of Madeline Murray O'Hare and Bertrand Russell on the end tables patting down dirt on a grave-marked religion. You know, then they go to the guest bedroom where I've placed a copy of God is Not Great on the bedside table in case they need one. Hand-carved image of the flying spaghetti monster hangs over the headboard across from a lovingly rendered oil painting of Sean Carroll mopping a debate stage with William Lane Craig. So they drop off their luggage, then they head into the kitchen where Sam Harris quotes hang next to embroidered doilies that say, we definitely randomly evolved from protobiotic sludge, and then we all settle in for a home-cooked meal. But first, of course, I lead them in atheist grace. Dear Lord, thanks for not existing so that we can live our lives without the panoptic fear that all the cruel shit in the world was intentional. Thank you for providing us with the comforting knowledge that the fish that swims up dudes' dick holes and devours them from the penis out was the product of impersonal natural forces rather than the insidious concoction of a magical psychopath that controls every aspect of our fate. Amen. Now, Don't misunderstand me here. If I did all of that stuff, if that's what my house did look like when my parents got here, it would be because I'm an asshole. You know, just like your religious aunt decks her house out in Jesus shit because she's an asshole or mentally ill or some combination of the two. But unlike the religious aunt, we're an overlooked minority. We're a minority that gets accused of assholery every time we self-identify. Our very existence offends people. Put a bumper sticker on your car or wear a t-shirt that identifies you as godless, and you're downright boorish. Yet through most of this country, you can't go a mile without coming across somebody going out of their way to identify their religious faith. And nobody says, wearing a crucifix, huh? What an asshole. Well, at least outside of Christian movie scripts, and they would say butt face instead of asshole. So yeah, nobody says that. And this double standard is so pervasive that at a glance, I was buying into it. You know, I look around my office and thought, yeah, they're right. Announcing to the people that come to my home that I don't find unquestioning devotion to fairy tales laudable, that's a real dick move. And I shouldn't have thought that. I should have known better. And yet it's so thoroughly woven into our culture that I had to think about it for a minute before I gave myself a swift kick in the ass. So fuck it. My mom's been milking that nine months in her womb shit long enough. My office stays how it is. I'm proud of the fight I'm fighting and the person that I am. And I'm not changing a damn thing just because of my parents' religious sensibilities. All right, I I, I might unimpale the plastic Jesus on the dartboard, but other than that, I'm not changing a thing. And I I might still leave him. I haven't even decided yet. They're talking about your Jesus. We interrupt this broadcast to bring you a special news bulletin. Joining me for headlines tonight are the dynamic duo of doubt, Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick. Fellas, is your symbol shining over Gotham tonight or what? Uh, uh, Not yet. We we still haven't agreed on the symbol. Still? Um, Yeah, I want a bat wing. But Eli doesn't want a scrotum involved, which which is uncharacteristic, honestly, in my opinion. Uh, Eli, what was your idea again? It was a swastika. I'm taking it back. Oh, God, dude. We can do double bat ring. Then it's not a scrotum. There you go. That's on, on a we arrange our scrotums into swastikas. All right. oh, that makes a lot more sense. Eli clarified. All right. So before this is why no charities wanted to work with us, guys. <laughs> so before we jump Not into headlines tonight, we're really excited to announce the return of Vulgarity for Charity. And we picked out an awesome charity that could really use your help. So Modest Needs has been helping to combat poverty in the U.S. and Canada for almost 15 years, and they do it in the smart way by helping to keep people from falling into poverty in the first place. Modest Needs provides an online resource for families and individuals in crisis to get short-term assistance from donors all over the world. And unlike a lot of crowdfunding charity sites, there's no concern about where the money actually goes. Modest Needs does all the work of vetting the applicants and make sure that all the money donated goes straight to their debtors. So basically, it's it's a website where you can go and help pay the electric bill of a family in need or, or help them with a car payment or medical bills or whatever. Yeah, yeah, it's good stuff. But when an overweight YouTube preacher wants 20 grand for an iPod shuffle camera <laughs> and a new red hat because his exploded, the site rejects that person. That's, they're yeah, they're right. very good about that. Or or if you want to hunt Kelly Kulberg for sport, it's a stupid charity. That's what I'm saying. It's a stupid <laughs> charity and I don't want to do it. And that's, that's, that's my statement. <laughs> All right. So for those of you who just started listening or who don't know, Vulgarity for Charity is a fundraiser where you donate money to people in need and we thank you by insulting whoever you think most needs it. And of course... If we're going to do vulgarity for charity again, we had to find a way to make it even more vulgar than last time. So we reached out to the most vulgar people that we know that aren't 
on this Skype call, namely Tom and Cecil over at Cognitive Dissonance, and together we decided to team up for a cross-podcast fundraiser. So here's how the thing works. First, you go to modestneeds.org to make a donation. You can either make a donation directly to the charity, or you can click on the Browse Requests for Help tab and find a specific person or family that you want to help. Once you make your donation, Modest Needs will email you a receipt, which you can then forward to vulgarityforcharity at gmail.com, along with the name of a person you would like us to insult. Yeah, and ideally, throw us a few details about that person if they're not famous or something like that. I mean, as much as we're happy to shit on the Brian in your life, everyone's got one, it's a lot more fun if we have something to work with beyond their names. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man, you got to do my cousin Steve. And we're just like, oh, Steve, <laughs> such a cousin. <laughs> pictures help. Pictures help. Yeah, definitely pictures. So if you donate over $20, we're going to insult anybody you'd like. And if you donate over $50, we're going to put your name in a random drawing to get a special celebrity guest insult. We can't name names just yet, but a number of friends in the atheist community have volunteered to read an insult for us. And some of them might still do it after they see what kind of fucked up shit we wrote for them to, to say. Yeah. And if you donate $100... I might get a new hat, you know, which is very exciting. <laughs> Guys, we told Heath hats cost forty thousand dollars, and we buy him a hat every year for his birthday. Don't spoil it. Don't spoil so, it. <laughs> so, one more time, check out modestneeds.org. You'll find a link on the show notes for this episode. Email proof of your donation to vulgarityforcharity at gmail dot com. That's the word for, not the number. Along with the name of the person you want insulted. The fundraiser will be running until next Sunday, September twenty fifth. So, if you want us to read your insult on the air, we need it before midnight Eastern on the twenty fifth. You'll find links to Modest Needs website on the show notes and full instructions and details at scathingatheist dot com. What if I make my donation on the 27th and I email you then? Will I get a special episode all to myself? <laughs> you will. Thanks for asking yeah. that question as it will be asked. No, sorry. We need it by Monday the 25th, guys. <laughs> Well-oiled machine here. All right. Going to headlines. In our lead story tonight, we still don't have a functional Supreme Court of nine people. Is that the lead? Uh, what the fuck? <laughs> That's not actually the story we're about to talk about, but oh. I feel like every news headline should start with this SCOTUS thing until Mitch McConnell <laughs> does his fucking job. So. Hey, hey, save it for the skeptocrat. Save it for the skeptocrat. Okay, it's coming. sorry. It's coming. <laughs> Moving on to the real lead story. And speaking of GOP senators and their uncanny ability to make sure progress doesn't happen, it's time for another... Bad idea, bad idea. Isn't it? Ooh, ooh, it I is. want to play. Uh, dating a woman who tells you all her exes are assholes, dating a man who wears a leather bracelet. I win. I win. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. You That's might strong. come in second here. Hold on a second. Hold on. Mm, okay. I'm yes. up, up against so, some um, stiff competition. Here's what we're working with. Uh, thanks to a Republican majority in Congress, the Zika relief bill won't be happening anytime soon unless Democrats agree to simultaneously defund Planned Parenthood. <sighs> And, of course, it, promote the Confederate flag. What? It's really in there. It's that's it also is. relevant here. <laughs> so, really, it's a bad idea, bad idea, bad idea. Overachievers. Apparently, yeah, they're, they're checking if a third wrong makes a right. <laughs> right. We've come to the point where reaching across the aisle now requires reaching directly through the crust of the earth into the pits of hell. So, okay, <laughs> four baby sacrifices to get this road built, <laughs> but then the school needs a new library. Damn. <laughs> yeah, so this is actually happening. That's not a big exaggeration you just made. Thanks to their religious right and their current hijacking of the GOP, Republican members of Congress are refusing to spend money on addressing the spread of a horrible disease that has severe consequences for women and their reproductive health. Mm -hmm. And somehow they've decided that the only way they are willing to approve any spending is if the money gets diverted from clinics that support women and their reproductive health. That's it. They yeah. won't put water in the tub unless Democrats agree to drill a hole in the bottom first. <laughs> Plus uh, one other thing started to mention it before the, GOP is pretty sure we're never going to solve this Zika problem without getting more Confederate flags out there. Where the fuck so, did that other even come from? Yeah, that's the uh, the other requirement. Expanded rights for symbolic hate speech mm -hmm. in addition. Yeah. Otherwise, no money for Zika victims. That's <laughs> Really? 
Yeah, really. Man, they really gave their hand away, right? Because, like, right? the Planned Parenthood thing, I see how you can weasel around it. It's like, oh, well, we want to give money to the Zika victims, but we don't a- accidentally want to fund abortions. But the flag thing is just, like, your soul for my pudding cup. Like, <laughs> you just, okay, Mary clearly gave their hand away. I love pudding. Yeah. He saw us in the back going, dude, you fuck, you got fucked on that deal. And, and, and keep in mind, <laughs> the, if they were doing this because they figured a rash of babies born with underdeveloped brains was religion's only shot at maintaining a majority in the post-internet world that would be less despicable than their stated goals here i, I mean you, you like it's one way or the other they're condemning babies to microcephaly but one way at least has a machiavellian purpose beyond satisfying their racist misogyny <laughs> give each of better? them a twitter at no illusions at no illusions Bye. <laughs> yeah this is, it's crazy this would be like democrats in congress refusing to pass a bill that funds military action against isis Without a provision that black lives officially matter from now on. <laughs> and also, Kaepernick goes on Mount Rushmore. <laughs> yeah, where Jackson used to be. <laughs> M- Michael Jackson? Yeah, he's on there. He's the oh, white guy. Oh, oh, gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> yeah. It, it's like that. Well, except nothing like that at all. The Zika gridlock thing is so much goddamn worse. Well, right. And... Not just because it's actually what the GOP is doing. It's just theoretically worse, too. Right. And and can you imagine the outrage if Dems did anything like this? Like, I understand a lot of stupid stuff about the right. I really do. I can empathize. But this is like thinking Silence of the Lambs is a clean sweep because she didn't put lotion in the basket. <laughs> They might as well threaten to kill another hostage every hour until we bring back slavery. (laughs) (laughs) And also starve one hostage an hour. No matter what. Yeah, exactly. What? And in autistic license news tonight, Ohio resident April Defabaugh is fuming pissed this week after a Big Brother's Big Sister's mentor forcibly baptized her autistic son despite the fact that he was kicking, screaming, and telling them he was afraid. Fuck. According to Defabar, her son has been dealing with recurring nightmares since it happened, and that shouldn't surprise anybody when you consider that, like, for a person who doesn't know what a baptism is and involves and didn't consent, a surprise baptism is waterboarding. <laughs> yeah, I, I, in fact, I believe forcible baptism was Frank Luntz's second choice if enhanced interrogation <laughs> technique didn't catch on. Oh, I want to see that back of the napkin list, right? <laughs> Conversation encouraging bathing. Uh <laughs> Testicular electrolysis. No, no, no. Uh, okay, what about, um, all right, hold on, there, there's mayo. Um, I think I wrote oath ape. Does, does that make sense to you? Oath ape. Mm. Oh, any, any chance you meant bath rape? Because that's perfect. Ah, that is what I meant. That is, so glad we talked this through. Yeah, teamwork. Good job. I know you guys are kidding, but I'm sure Luntz would be happy to share that napkin with you. He's quite <laughs> proud of it. Now, we've talked on this show before about the higher rates of atheism among autistic people than neurotypical folks. It must it, be the atheism in the vaccines. Okay. <laughs> well, that could be. That could be, sure. But as I understand it, and I should say, I'm, I'm a long way from an expert on this, but a lot of ta- autistic people have trouble with teleology. They, like, they can't tell when something is purposeful and that's dysfunctional when it means you can't tell a house is designed and a tree isn't but it also insulates them often against teleological thinking gone mad also known as religion so (laughs) christianity's farcical aquatic ceremony made even less sense to this kid than it does to me I, i all he sees is a bunch of men in dresses about to deprive him of oxygen and as appealing as that might sound to eli even he would get a safe word first yeah my safe word is keep going. <laughs> I bet it is. Get out of here. That's so funny. My safe word is wink. <laughs> <laughs> Starting to understand all the confusion we've been having. All right, so maybe we do like baseball signs. <laughs> if it's on. skin to jersey. Like on steroids? Like just like it's super ripped? Because you struggle away. You're like one of those water willies you get at the arcade for a certain <laughs> amount of tickets. <laughs> Surprisingly wily for a tall guy. Was, That's uh, behind the scenes so, stuff. They don't care. Back was that a drowning. wink or a blink? It was a wink, dude. <laughs> a wink. One eye wink. Keep the other eye wide open. <laughs> Remind me what this story was about. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now so, Defabaugh rightly filed charges of assault and child endangerment against both the church and the pastor who performed the ceremony, but was warned by the officer filing the report that it was unlikely that any of the criminal charges would stick as the child suffered no physical harm. Oh, sure. During a baptism, it's no harm, but you send Kelly Kohlberg a Hogwarts amount of emails that you're going to drown her and you get a restraining <laughs> order. You don't and get you to make those jokes on the air anymore. Actually Andrew comes her. to your apartment with paperwork. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, look, uh, one way or the other, however this turns out, it's pr- some pretty horrendous shit. I mean, you know, maybe the justice system works here and somebody gets in trouble. I doubt it, but maybe. But even if they do, look, if I ran around force dunking autistic kids to protect them from demons, they'd lock me the fuck up. The mom filing charges would be a goddamn formality. I'm just saying, you know, maybe nobody should be able to give 14-year-old girls wine on Sunday morning. We've seen where that's led. I'm suggesting maybe all of us follow the same fucking laws. Is that crazy? Am I fucking crazy? Apparently, yes. Yeah, when you yell that really loud at the end of your sentence as often as I do, you probably are. Yeah, exactly. And in even more BAP news tonight, Staff Sergeant Marcus Rogers is in some hot water this week because the blood of other people tends to warm up water. (laughs) Also attracts sharks, according to the Mm. movies. That's why you can't bring girls to the beach. (laughs) Or bear hunting. (laughs) So for those who don't follow along with Christian nutbags with quite the same enthusiasm that we do, Rogers is a preacher and Facebook Christian who specializes in talking about Jesus while dressed as an army man and stabbing garbage bags. Which is exactly (laughs) what the contestants will be doing in Louisiana's Got Talent if the CAW ever gets back to me. (laughs) Lazy motherfuckers. And uh, he looks like Donald Glover wants to make America great again. Yeah. It looks like a screen cap of harassment on a dating app. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, you neglected to mention my favorite pastime of his, uh, which is the bit where he desperately tries to solicit half a million dollars from his YouTube viewers for non-specific efforts to spread the word of Jesus. Yeah, I mean, hey, half a million dollars does help with pretty much anything. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> true. Yeah. So despite the fact that he's not a chaplain and is also certifiably insane, he decided to use a recently flooded river for a fellow soldier's <laughs> baptism. <laughs> well, and, and look, the military has rules about this shit because it's the military and it's shit. They have rules about all the shit. Only chaplains are allowed to baptize soldiers on base because if you fuck it up, you could accidentally kill somebody. Shit. Spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, granted, the baptism in the flooded river, not the greatest idea. But in fairness, I'm sure this was all based on sincerely held breaths. Oh, God. So, <laughs> gotta be and, and I want to be totally clear that there's been no, like, official explanation yet. But what we do know is that Rogers posted pictures of him baptizing the soldier in the river he drowned in the day he drowned. Could be coincidence, but yeah. if I were a betting man, I'd put money on over-enthusiastic hate preacher drowns fellow soldier to make sure he's good and saved and then runs away like a little bitch. Yeah, that's well, certainly what it looks weird like. Weird to drown someone while you're saving them, right? <laughs> weird to drown someone while you're using the word save. <laughs> Maybe he botched it and the guy was still Muslim. And you think figured, the guy ah! went to hell? Yeah, exactly. That's the thing. That's the, the, that's what we don't know. Yeah, we asked the hard How questions. far was he into the baptism? He's just three feet above hell. (laughs) Stuck in these rocks, guys. I mean, it's not bad, but like rocks. And uh, quite warm. By the way, that fundraiser you were talking about, the uh, last riverbender just (laughs) shut it down after collecting 30 grand. And I can't stress this enough. Not for life jackets. No, that might be where it ends up going, but not for that. Yeah. And also, apparently, fat guy in a red hat is pissed that reporters are acknowledging this. (laughs) Apparently, certifiably dangerous Christian crowdfunding scammers are a tight-knit group. Yeah, it's sad to think that atheism lacks the unity of schizophrenics who yell at their phones about Jesus while they drive. (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to be over in the corner swinging back and forth from the neck. (laughs) And in Darwish Awards news tonight, the Hindu deity Ganesha sent a strongly worded message to some of his Indian worshippers last week in the form of drowning them in a river for being idiots. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or he doesn't exist, and the the idiots just drowned of (laughs) natural causes. Either way, I don't like to ridicule people following their tragic death. Um, But actually, yes, I do. In this case, I really, really do. Because their dumbass religious ritual, which was the reason they were in the river during a fucking thunderstorm, Could have easily killed innocent children in the process or caused the death of other people who tried to save them. You don't know. Right. And uh, also, it's been more than a week, so too late, if anything. (laughs) Well, 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 and also, there's something like 80 drowning deaths a day in India, so the too soon exchange is really low there. (laughs) Yeah, I have a friend who paid to drown a lady in India. Cost him $8. No shit. (laughs) I'm the friend. (laughs) Kelly Colbert's the lady. (laughs) So, uh, yeah. I'm coming for you, Kelly. (laughs) Best as I can tell... uh, 
Here's what happened. As part of an annual Hindu festival, lots of people like to take clay idols of Ganesha into a river and dunk them into the water. Uh, that's why India's been doing so great for all these years. Oh, I see. It's a big part of their success. <laughs> Finally explained it. <laughs> How come your cheese is mushy bricks? Learn to make cheese. <laughs> when vegans can talk shit about your cheese, dude, you've got some fucked up cheese. I didn't like it when I had cheese. <laughs> I have cashew cheese now, and I don't miss your cheese. <laughs> I do miss your cheese. I miss your cheese so much. I miss it so much. All right. It's all so bad. <laughs> I don't care if it's GMO or not. That word doesn't mean what you think it means. <laughs> right. Sorry, we're doing news. Yeah, yeah. some brown yeah. people. Back drown. to another awesome drowning story. Um, so <laughs> the uh, elephant-headed god of intellect and wisdom, actually may have finally snapped when about a 100 crazy people got into the same tiny fucking clown boat and paddled their death raft into the middle of a river while thunderclouds were moving in. Mm -hmm. And along the way, something went wrong with that plan. Can't imagine how. (laughs) And what appears to be a piece of construction paper folded into the shape of a boat managed to capsize, leading to the drowning death of approximately 13 people. Yeah. Yeah. And again, there is nothing funny about this. Stop picturing it to yakety sax. Stop it. <laughs> and <laughs> whatever you do, one. don't apply that to the existing video of it. Yeah. <laughs> and in prayer of the boy rollers news tonight, Pope Francestry.com <laughs> announced plans That's on Monday awesome to movie. tackle the ongoing problem of child sex abuse in the church by wishing real hard. Oh, glad to see he gave up the wrapping a towel around his eyes so people couldn't see him. <laughs> no, 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 I didn't say that. I didn't say he he may just be adding this. I don't know. So this announcement from one of the three people on earth most able to meaningfully reduce child sex abuse through simple unilateral action was proposed by his child protection panel, who apparently convened and discussed things and shit before they came up with this. Because, look, no matter how nice you want to be here, there are only two ways to read this. Either prayer doesn't work and they're just ignoring the problem more proactively now, or it does work and they just now thought to use their no-raped children spell after a century of fucking kids. Either way, they are now worse. Right. And we have to be clear, this panel unequivocally decided that magic wishing and just magic wishing was the course of action here. It wasn't like, oh, we're going to start working with the cops and wish upon a star. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, okay, well, I'm glad they decided to ramp it up with the praying. It's it's the thought that counts. That's good. Not really. But um, how hard were they wishing before? Like, <laughs> not the maximum amount? Apparently they were not. Six and they were like, what? <laughs> Ooh, wait, wait, wait. Does this indicate that they were actively praying for kids to get raped before? Oh my God, guys, prayer works. <laughs> prayer works. <laughs> now, I'm not going to call this entire endeavor a waste, as I do have to admit that there will be a statistically significant drop in child sex abuse any time that all the Catholic priests have their hands together. So mm, then you have not that. heard of arrow fisting. Oh, it's like God. Olympic diving, <laughs> but with a butt. <laughs> Google that and show it to your kids. No, no. Google, <laughs> show your kids. <laughs> yeah, okay, but it, it still cuts the potential in half, right? A- at least half of the hand stuff. So oh, that's God, good. Jesus. <laughs> we'll start doing some uh, sword crossing prayers, too. Then <laughs> then we'll know they're taking it seriously. That'd be good. Push your dicks together. Them, them doing the sword crossing prayers and taking it seriously, <laughs> equally likely. And yakety sacks. <laughs> <laughs> If you're not picturing us doing a Silicon Valley version of figuring out how many kids a priest can fuck at one time, you get the kids by height and have them put their dicks together, and then it's like... Jesus. I wasn't old. picturing that. I promise I wasn't. <laughs> and in Crowd to Tree in America news tonight, much like Freedom Fries and coughing, the Christian Wright's insane fixation on shit nobody would fucking care about continued this week when Pastor Alan Joyner, who looks like his mom still cuts his hair despite losing that eye, decided <laughs> to voice his opinion on the stupidest controversy since... Okay, since like five minutes ago, in the beginning, <laughs> Noah pointed out, the world's crazy in a terrible place now. There's nothing... I can't name examples since a fart ate itself and threw up, and then it'll be in the New York Times tomorrow, so I can't... It's just... Okay. The thing is, namely, whether or not to stand for the national anthem. Yeah. Yeah. Well, personally, I always try to stand. Mm-hmm, yeah. And uh, if I can't do that, uh, I'll do a hile. Yes. My- <laughs> but that's just me. That's just the way I was raised. I'm a... 
patriots. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now, I'm going to get to the Chipotle blood fart of an opinion that came out of his mouth, but since we haven't talked about this yet, gentlemen, opinions on whether or not sitting during the national anthem is akin to dancing on the graves of the men who died at Iwo Jima? <laughs> well, okay, as a person who's danced on a lot of people's graves, it's true, I resent it. the insinuation that it's as easy as just not standing up during America's theme song, but <laughs> setting that aside... I feel like when you're unable to wrest a starting job out of the hands of the Jacksonville Jaguars sloppy seconds, <laughs> you should not be allowed to lead a national conversation on anything. You're backing up Blaine fucking Gabbert, Colin. <laughs> Donald Trump's hair wrangler would be embarrassed to put that down as his occupation. If you're going to get offended by Colin Kaepernick, let's be offended by the fact that he cost a perfectly good franchise the 36th overall pick, okay? <laughs> yeah. It's not like he's a Heisman Trophy winner with a lucrative... Minor league baseball contract. <laughs> the yes. Mets. I want to hear from somebody with accomplishments. Yeah. You know, like survived an abortion. Stuff like that. <laughs> that kind of stuff. <laughs> but generally, and let me say this from the bottom of my heart, and look, I know I'm quote unquote preaching to the choir here, but fuck your jingoistic little song and your lack of understanding about what rights mean. Fuck your respect our troops bumper sticker while you cut funding for veterans. Right. Fuck the honky tonk pseudo patriotism while you make fucking safe space and trigger warning jokes, which makes vets afraid to use those resources. And hey, since it just happened, fuck your tragedy porn. Where were you? Non reflective nine eleven porn while you play devil's advocate on behalf of people who have made a concerted effort to prevent dying emergency workers from getting the care they need you don't love this country you love the country you remember it's moving on without you it's forgetting you and that is pretty fucking american it should be fucking like fireworks or something at the end of that you but should be the backup quarterback for the niners <laughs> <laughs> i hear i'm as good as him right? <laughs> so here's what pastor allen thinks quote if you don't want to stand for the national anthem, you can line up over there by the fence and let our military personnel take a few shots at you what? since they're taking shots for you, end quote. But, and doesn't that sound sort of like exactly the opposite of what Walter Subcheck's friends died face down in the mud for? <laughs> I'm confused. I feel confused. Yeah, yeah. Proposing that we murder people who refuse to show fealty to arbitrary symbols of state in the name of freedom. Words officially don't mean anything anymore. Congratulations, Christianity. You're done. <laughs> and uh, just going back to Kaepernick for a second, um, it, if you really wanted to stand during the anthem, just play it during the last two minutes of the fourth quarter during a blowout. <laughs> and you got him. Just sneak it in on him. Just, just, you know, between sacks and you got him. <laughs> anyway, everyone is far too busy asking black people to ask pretty please with sugar on top for us to stop shooting their children for there to be much more on this. But thanks to Pastor Alan Joyner for proving you might be stupid, but... You're never Alabama stupid. <laughs> Unless you're Good lesson. Pastor Alan Joyner. And with that, we're going to pause for a quick break. So I ask you all to rise for the twim introduction as we hand <laughs> things over to my lovely wife, Lucinda. A man wrote the Bible. A whore is what she was. If it's a legitimate rape. It makes you a slut, right? Hey, cooking can be fun. Hey, I'm proud of a man. This week in Massachusetts. Sorry in advance, y'all, but it's going to be a rapey week. I can't help it. I started the week off with an inbox full of links to this story out of Ohio about a youth pastor raping a 16-year-old girl and then being asked to apologize to the youth pastor's wife. Now, first things first, the church has denied these allegations, so take this all with a grain of salt. But according to the victim's mother, she was told her family couldn't return to the church until her daughter apologized to her rapist's wife for having an inappropriate relationship with her husband. And it's worth noting that this was part of her testimony at the rape trial, not a lawsuit against the church. So kind of hard to see what she had to gain from making this shit up. Still, the church swears it was just a misunderstanding. They insist that, quote, the church arranged outside counseling for the victim and her family at the church's own expense and that they, quote, reached out in support and love for both the victim's family and the family of the perpetrator, end quote. But here's the thing. Why would you tell a rape victim how much you support her rapist's family? Seems like the kind of thing that can just go unsaid if you're not trying to hush anybody up. I mean, if I'm in the mafia and I'm actually genuinely struck by what a shame it would be if something should happen to the local deli I'm in, I maybe keep that to myself. 
But if that's still too flimsy for you, don't worry. I've got an undisputed victim blaming rape story for you, too. This one comes to us from Canada, where federal judge Robin Camp may lose his job after asking a rape victim why she couldn't just keep her knees together. According to the unnamed victim, he went on to explain that, quote, sex and pain sometimes go together. That's not necessarily a bad thing, end quote. And honestly, this dude's excuses are about one degree shy of the dog eating his sense of basic human decency. He started off by claiming that he was just being, quote, facetious, end quote. And when it became clear that nobody was buying his I was only fucking with her excuse, he moved on to claiming that he was just a simple caveman justice. Seriously, his backup justification was that he practiced law in South Africa for decades where the rape laws were way different. Now, something tells me you're not allowed to ask rape victims why they didn't shut that whole thing down, even in South Africa. But one way or the other, he's trying to claim that he should keep his job by arguing that he's unqualified for it. And regardless of legal minutia here, shouldn't one of the prerequisites to being a judge be having minimal empathy for humans? I guess the only silver lining here is that he's in Canada, so he can't make Donald Trump's Supreme Court shortlist. And lastly tonight, since you took those first two rape stories like a champ, I'll close on some good news. You may have heard of Ian McCann when he was arrested last week on charges of rape and attempted rape. He made atheist news circles by claiming that the Bible gave him the right to fuck whoever he wants, whenever he wants. Now, this is Arizona, not Indiana, so he wasn't let out because of RIFRA, but he was let out. Because of a clerical error, the police had to release him and couldn't issue a proper arrest warrant until the next day. And during that time, of course, McCann disappeared. Well, his luck ran out on Tuesday when a news reporter was doing an on-site record about the McCann story when the fucktard walks by in the background. Anyway, the reporter and her camera operator followed him and called the police, and he was arrested moments later. So I guess I have a little something to think about for those three months with good behavior. Uh, sorry, good news, good news, I promise good news. So, rather than releasing the tirade of fury over this country's grossly lenient rape sentencing guidelines, I'll force a smile and hand things back over to Noah, Heath, and Eli. Thank you, Lucinda. And in booking can be fun news tonight, turns out that Stephen Anderson's visit to South Africa was planned about 23 years too late as they no longer welcome hate-spewing violence-endorsing white people with the same fervor they used to. (laughs) Anderson learned that the hard way this week after South Africa's Home Affairs Minister Malusi Gigaba denied his application for a visa on the grounds of being a hateful little bigot. Ooh, ooh, things South Africa and Bitcoin have in common. Go, slaves. So fast, so fast. I was about to shout that anyway. It was just that's coincidence. that's both of your one. Okay, no, no, no. I'm I'm switching my answer to miners. Gonna save my <laughs> one for later. Okay, or roll it over. You said we could roll it over. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> miners are easy to roll over. <laughs> God, Jesus, <laughs> how did that get worse? I couldn't imagine that was gonna get worse, and it did. God damn it. He is a half Nelson. <laughs> All right, so luckily for Steven Anderson, he also applied to a couple of safety African nations, and Botswana decided to let him in. Yeah, the the Trinity College of Africa, Botswana. (laughs) Went to Williams, don't send me emails. So (laughs) Anderson responded to this news via Facebook to make it clear that he wasn't mad, he just really felt sorry for South Africa for not getting to hang out with them, and now Botswana will get all the salvation. Jesus, he's a human version of an ever creepier Facebook message to a girl you don't know. In every possible way. (laughs) Yeah. I would treat you so good. (laughs) (laughs) So after reminding his followers that the UK government won't even allow him to catch a connecting flight at Heathrow, he says, quote, I feel sorry for the people of South Africa. Stand by for the reports of multitudes saved in Botswana where religious freedom still exists. End quote. Okay. Uh, so Andrew informs me that I have a, a joke. How many what? listeners does it take to hire a Botswanan mercenary to kill Steven Anderson? Uh, how, how many? many? One. GoFundMe.com forward slash kill Steven Anderson. No. No, no. Murder GoFundMe. Murder Go. We said no murder Go. Noah, he's that doing a murder GoFundMe. <laughs> that wasn't a murder. That was a different. It was, I meant like kill it. it like definitely like a, a, jo- a joke. Like a sick. Kick forewarned us was a joke and therefore we're not legally culpable if someone then goes and does that so yeah yeah no he's a lot it does say on the whiteboard that's your zero (laughs) (laughs) now look 
I, I have to say here, I get South Africa denying him entry into their country. Believe me, we were planning on doing the same shit once we got him into South Africa. You know, I've, I've never heard of no Steven Anderson. So <laughs> I, I applaud the move and all, but I feel like from a humanitarian perspective, it's just not fair that we have to keep him all the time. So <laughs> I submitted a proposal to the UN. It's like, you know, when grandpa starts getting old and you pass him between siblings. Every country has to take him for a little while. We just, you know, go down the list alphabetically. So Afghanistan gets him first. Ooh, I like it. Don't worry. We'll send him with the pillbox-shaped e-Bibles. Fine. <laughs> totally fine. <laughs> totally fine. Meanwhile, DR Congo is already working on switching their name back. <laughs> <laughs> and finally tonight, in MGM Gland News, according to a recent article by Hemant Mehta on The Friendly Atheist, there's a product now available on Amazon called the Infant Circumcision trainer yep it appears to be a practice doll for people who want to be sure uh nothing goes wrong when they mutilate the genitals of newborn baby boys so that's available just saying my birthday is on the 26th <laughs> so i'm just saying listeners ask <laughs> it's all that's on my amazon wish list <laughs> and uh although the doll is uh not marketed this way the device looks like it could help with practicing for oversized clits as well oh, of the yeah. babies. So uh, they're nice and versatile. And <laughs> they come with extra dicks. Like, seriously, like look at the picture. It comes like with six extra dicks. There's actually a which, bag of dicks you yes, get with this. Exactly. Yep, exactly. That means that somewhere out there, someone in the universe is occupationally compelled to occasionally say, I'd like another dozen of your plastic baby dicks, <laughs> which means, by extension, all the rest of the joy in my life is an unnecessary bonus. Hey, that was a private phone call. You put it on speakerphone. Privately. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, before we get to all the details of this product, which are amazing. All of them, uh, yes. I want to make a few quick points about this practice in general of circumcision, of which I am a survivor. <laughs> yes, yes, am I. Uh, I'll start by saying the fact that people in modern society are still cutting baby dicks with a knife is baffling to say the least yeah and uh also a sex crime by any reasonable standard right uh and also a regular crime <laughs> um, if that's not clear imagine if a husband uh chopped off his wife's nipples because a ghost is going to be mad at him if he leaves those on or, or any other reason just yeah, imagine right, yeah. nipple chopping <laughs> doesn't matter why the fbi sends jody foster to shoot that guy in his basement <laughs> and uh i feel like cutting off body parts shouldn't become more legal because you switch from main body to genitals. How is that? Right. Better? Yeah, right. And, and switching to a helpless baby doesn't seem to improve things either. I, I do not get this. Ooh, ooh, I want to play apologist. Well, um, well, you see, my culture has been cutting off nipples for years. Who's to say what's right and wrong? Who said anyone? Cut it out, guys. Seriously. <laughs> no, no shit. You're less likely to get AIDS nipples if you'd cut them off. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And uh, now for the fun part. And I highly encourage everyone to search Amazon for infant circumcision trainer so you can search for yourself. Maybe leave a review. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, for those who haven't already, I'll give you a few highlights. First of all, the practice dummy that pops up first comes in two versions, white and medium. <laughs> <laughs> I'm assuming they, uh, they also offered tar at one point. <laughs> and uh, just for the record... A different supplier does make a version called Dark, which costs about triple the white price of $192. Huh. Uh, reviews indicate you'll never grow back. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, the Dark model comes with one of those paper cutter things from middle school. There. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's probably why they won't sell you the one right up front. You have to level up to the black baby. <laughs> and uh, one last detail worth mentioning. The Amazon page has an excellent Q&A section. Oh, does Definitely it? don't miss the Q&A. <laughs> uh, for example, at the top of the list, someone asked, can it be used as a doorstop? I need a doorstop that costs <laughs> under $186. What a great visual. And, uh, yes, it can. Uh, another person asked, where can I get a black one? And uh, here's the answer from the actual seller. No. Well, hi. <laughs> hi. It starts with hi. <laughs> Hi, unfortunately, we do not carry the black version, but we do have a brown one here, wow. and they provided a link to the medium version, I see. which is 
brownish. <laughs> and uh, finally, a question from someone called Ebaz NYC, <laughs> who asked, "Does it have an anus?" <laughs> and uh, answer was, sadly, it does not. But according to a recent buyer, you can always make your own. <laughs> so that's nice. You can always make your own anus is my morning affirmation. It's a, <laughs> it's a constant excuse for my wife, too. She tells me that a lot. My morning affirmation makes it harder to pee. <laughs> Am I using that correctly? Anyway. Uh, Hi. You can always make your own anus. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it uh, appears that once again we've stumbled across a niche in the economy that could use some clever marketing help. Oh, have we? I guess so. Uh, <laughs> well, especially considering mutilation of baby dicks is far from the worst thing recommended by the world's most popular holy books, which is fucking terrifying. Yeah. And also somehow impressive. I gotta say, a little bit impressive. Anyway. My first thought was a thief dummy for Quran adherents to practice hand chopping. Okay. Reverse left and, and yeah. you know, right foot chopping, whatever. Right, like operation. Yeah. yeah. And uh, also maybe a gay dummy to throw rocks at. <laughs> That'd be good. Um, but the real money, as I understand it, is in the penis cutting stuff. Clearly, yeah. So let's go ahead and put 30 seconds on the clock. Ideas for the genital mutilation doll company. Go. All right. All right. A couple of subtraction figures for you. Got it. How about a package patch kids for the boys... And bandage snatch kids for the girls. Huh? <laughs> uh, GI track Joe. <laughs> right, because you can make your own anus. Yeah. yeah it was, <laughs> um, you get it. You get what it. about uh, weenie babies? Yeah, there you go. Uh, dismember me Elmo. Oh, there you oh, go. Yeah. Uh, or no, no, no. I'm going strawberry shortcock. Oh, nice. Shortcock. Nice. I like it. I like weenie babies a lot. How about uh, blady lovely cocks? Ooh, huh? I like a, uh, Moyle Little Pony, Twilight <laughs> Speckle. Someone who has a kid loves that. We got a lot of bronies in the audience. All right, what about um, Mr. Bepe Tato Head? <laughs> and he's a sucker of parts. <laughs> the herpes. Uh, the yes, yeah, yeah, with the, uh, yeah. yeah. Moyles that have horrible I know, diseases uh, and suck on baby dicks. Sorry, I seem to ahead. recall that FGM Schwartz sold the shit out of those clitoris pet shop dolls during Ramadan. So <laughs> oh, they, it's true. It's true. I bring those back. Uh, what about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtlenecks? <laughs> Leonardo Bleeds, uh, Donatello gets gangrene. <laughs> Sounds like an awesome cartoon, if you ask me. Turtles in a half sleeve. Turtle power. <laughs> And now that the image of four crime-fighting ninja penises is firmly embedded in your brain, I feel like the purpose of the headline segment has been served. Heath, Eli, thanks as always. Make your own anus. And when we come back, the bullshit will hit the fan. I suppose that when you name a segment after fecal matter, it's only natural that people are going to get uncomfortable if that segment doesn't occur regularly. So with apologies for the long constipated hiatus, we're happy to squeeze out not one but two trips down Tripe Turnpike in a special double edition of How Bullshit Is It? So tell us, Heath, what's the first egregious misappropriation of neurons that you have for us today? Okay, tonight we'll be talking about the ancient Chinese art of cupping therapy. Okay, all right. I, I, but uh, don't we normally tackle these in alphabetical order? Uh, yeah, normally. Um, but after all the hickey-covered Olympians a few weeks back, and since not too many good pseudosciences start with K, we're going to abandon the alphabetical thing for the moment and tackle the traditional Chinese medicinal practice of cupping. You can imagine it starting with a K if you like. Okay, all right. So we're going to practice cupping, you and I. Uh, well, maybe later, but okay, we so just talk now. Other than manually gauging the volume of a ball sack, what is cupping? Uh, the less useful form of cupping comes to us from traditional Chinese medicine, often called TCM by people trying to make it sound less bullshitty. It involves heating the air inside a cup and then applying the cup to a patient's skin, causing a vacuum. Uh-huh. And why would anyone do that or want that done? That would be lack of a sound critical thinking curriculum in public schools. Amen to that, brother. So, okay, what are gullible people made to believe is happening here? Well, according to practitioners, the vacuum, when applied to the proper acupuncture points, can help unblock and realign chi flow. Of course it can. Okay, mm -hmm. so acupuncture points don't exist. Chi isn't a thing. The cupping is used. So is this bullshit cubed? Uh, yeah, at a minimum. Mm -hmm. All right. So now are you saying that like Olympians like Michael Phelps are doing this shit to unblock their chi flow? Uh, 
Possibly, but the beauty of a medical procedure that produces absolutely no benefit is that it produces an equal lack of benefit for all ailments. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, cupping practitioners can sprinkle in words like toxins and free radicals to claim that their treatment cures cancer, and they're no less right than they are on the chi flow thing. So, I mean, but do they do they really do that? Do, do you really doubt that they do that? N- not even a little. Yeah. Yes. Well, uh, granted, the cupping cures cancer crowd is distinct minority, even among TCM nuts, but common claimed benefits of cupping include detoxification, clearing the colon, shitting, uh, mm-hmm. reducing scar tissue, improving varicose veins, and helping activate the arteries and skin. Whatever the fuck that yeah, means. Yeah, no shit. Okay, so I think we can all agree that one's chi flow isn't being unblocked. So when one does place one of these vacuum cups over one's skin, what actually is happening? Well, you're pulling blood up towards the surface of the skin and temporarily reducing blood flow. Uh-huh. The notorious cupping hickeys are the result of capillaries expanding, fluid accumulating in your skin tissue, and the rupturing of blood vessels near the skin surface. So... Bruises. Bruises, yeah. That's okay. Exactly. Um, yep. Aren't bruises bad? They are. They are. Okay. How bad? Um, well, generally speaking, they're pretty much harmless. Uh, most of the time, cupping bruises are minor and go away in a couple of days. You just look like an idiot. But they do carry an increased risk of skin infections, so they're, all right, they're not well, great. I mean, obviously, we, we know that all pseudo-medicine carries risks, right? People will use that instead of real treatment. People will think problems are solved when they're not. People will waste money. People will reinforce magical thinking that they'll then bring to the ballot box. But when you set all of that aside, how harmful is cupping like compared to other pseudosciences? Uh, well, you, you don't usually get bruises when you're dowsing. So uh, well, it's okay, yeah, worse. but I mean, but compared to the shit like chiropractic and miracle mineral salts, this is like relatively harmless, right? Uh, well, here, here's the thing. Up until now, we're only talking about beginner level cupping. Um, if we really want to answer the what's the harm question definitively, we'll have to talk about uh, wet cupping, the um, uh-huh. advanced level Sounds stuff. Sounds pretty sexy. It's not. Okay, so what is it? It's the same thing, but they also cut you. It still sounds sexy. Okay, well, picture an old Chinese guy bruising you with a hickey pulling the cup off long enough to cut the bruise with a scalpel, then placing another suction cup over the cut to suck out your blood. And then, if you're not bleeding fast enough, applying pressure around the newly inflicted wound to speed up the process. So, bloodletting. Uh, yeah, but sexy bloodletting. Uh Uh-huh, okay, granted. But isn't bloodletting also bad? It is. It very much is. Like, Killed George Washington levels of bad? Uh, exactly those levels of bad, yeah. Okay, I, I, I mean, I, I feel like, uh, maybe I'm confused on the history, but I feel like we stopped doing that round about the time we killed George Washington with it. Did these guys not get that memo? Well, uh, stupid persists one way or the other, but adding to the difficulty here is the fact that wet cupping is endorsed in the Quran and several of the Hadith. Oh, shit. So a lot of Muslims see the practice as a religious prescription. Okay, wait, is that the part where they talk about cutting your hands and feet off on opposite sides? Is it? Uh, no, no, uh, totally different type of bleeding. Okay, gotcha. So, just to be clear, there is no legitimate use for cupping? Well, uh, there, there's still BDSM, that's I, important. No legitimate medical use. But some doctors recommend BDSM uh, oh, 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 medically. Right, and, well, I guess the only question left to ask is, How, how bullshit, bullshit is it? Is it? Okay, um, I'd say it's Ryan Lochte after a gas station burrito in Brazil. <laughs> Levels of bullshit. It's a lot of bullshit. All right, well, well, I guess we can pause for a quick break to let everybody digest that first pile, but we'll be back in a moment with yet another heaping helping of bullshit. An ode to St. Teresa. A diatribe is enough. 
I mean, I said enough stuff about the recently sainted Teresa, but no matter how plainly you explain your disdain, three or four people want to police you. So I wrote one last rhyme. I swear, I'm finished this time, but this is a sum up for all of the haters about how this scut was a sado, a real asshole tornado, and as helpful as Mongol invaders. I mean, you could do your own Google, but get this through your noodle. She wasn't a friend of the poor. She gave out vitamin pills and she skimped on the bills and left her patients to shit on the floor. No pain medication because she'll prevent your damnation if you suffer the same as her savior. So she put others through hell while she stayed in five-star hotels using money that criminals gave her. This would go on for too long if I tried to list all the wrongs she perpetrated on those in her care. She was a miserable bitch. I won't do it any better than Hitch. Read his book or his blog. It's all there. I mean, I get the appeal of one steady wheel to contrast with a world that's so greedy. It makes us feel better if one person spent her life selflessly helping the needy. But she's not that person. And the problem just worsens if we wait for the next saint to save us. Because if we do this together, we can make the world better and get rid of the lies that enslave us. And incidentally... If you'd like to help prove that, go to modestneeds.org and help a family in need. And if you're considering it, you're already better than St. Teresa. And we're back for the encore edition of this segment that was already about number two before we even got to the second part. So tell us, Heath, what insult to inference will we be tackling next? That's me, actually. Oh. Oh, my bad, dude. Um, Usually, uh, Heath does the how bullshit is it segments. Yeah, yeah, but he said I could do this one. Are, are, are you sure? Because he's been doing this segment for a really long time. I know he likes... Yep. To... Said I could do it. Okay. Now, 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 you know that he does a bunch of, like, um, like research and, and shit beforehand, right? Like, knows a bunch of stuff about the thing that we're going to talk about. Yeah, before. totally prepared. All right. All right. Yeah, no, I, I didn't mean to impugn your integrity. I was just, just, just making sure. So, okay. So, we just kind of cheated our way through K, which puts us on L. So, tell us, Eli... What insult to inference will we be tackling next? Lyme disease, comma, fucking away. I I, I see. And um, how no bullshit, bullshit is, it? is it? Not at all. Totally legit medical practice. Yeah, I was afraid you were going to say that. It isn't. It yes, isn't. It is. It, it, I, it's, it said so on a how bullshit is it segment. And you told me those were super well researched. That, that so doesn't like- count. Are you calling you a liar? Because, like, you're my friend, and I don't Eli, let people we, call Why do we even li- have the whiteboard if you're going to do shit like this? It, it, you said I needed a well-researched source before I got to make any medical claims. And you just said, how bullshit is it, was well-researched. Well, that's Check. not... That's, um, how- hold, hold on. Um, I just walked in. Sorry to interrupt you guys, but um, I, I think you gave me the wrong movie. I, I watched the whole thing, and... Julie Andrews never puts her umbrella in there. I mean, let alone opened it, but nothing like oh. that at all, Eli. What What were you? This used? must have been the thing of a different... Did you watch it a second hold, time? Oh, wait, hold to... on a second. Hold on a second. Let, let's go find that other video right now. No, Heath, on, let's go no. Heath, Who wants to go outside? Heath, while you're here, did you tell Eli he could do the how bullshit is it segment? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, he said it would be help with the Lyme disease therapy thing. And according to Noah, Noah says it will be. No, now. that is not what I said. That's what you implied. No, you know what? Because technically, this isn't a how bullshit is it segment until the second time I get all echoey and ask you how, how bullshit, bullshit is it. it. No, 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 that doesn't not at all. count. Not at all. No, 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 you hit the echoey button, button that, that doesn't, doesn't count. count. Doesn't, doesn't say anything, anything about, about buttons and when we can, can hit them on the whiteboard. God board. damn it. I fuck away your light disease duck. Uh, okay, okay, you don't, you don't really, really have, have a video, video of Mary Poppins, Poppins fucking, fucking her umbrella, do you? Because, because I mean, I was a little excited. excited. No. no. But, but I have I me have doing it in a dress. dress. Okay. okay. Do you do, do poon, poon full of sugar? sugar? I do I chin, chin chimney. Before we disappear over the audio horizon tonight, I want to remind you one more time that we already told the people at Modest Needs how incredibly generous you are, so don't make us look bad here. Again, modestneeds.org, which is linked on the show notes. Check out what they do, and I'm sure you'll be inspired to help them the same way that we were. Also, if you're a Patreon supporter, we have awesome news for you. Patreon just added a password-protected RSS feed option to their website. That means you can now get your extended early edition of the episode on the same app where you get all your other podcasts. It's a super simple process. takes all of four seconds 
and the new special edition will just pop up in your player as soon as they drop, just like anything else. If you're already a Patreon supporter, be sure to check your inbox as you should have received an email with all the info on how to activate that feed. Anyway, that's all the blasphemy we've got for you tonight, but we'll be back in 10,022 minutes with more. If you can't wait that long, be on the lookout for a brand new episode of our sister show's hot friend, God Awful Movies, debuting on Tuesday at 8 a.m. Eastern. I think we're tackling what might be the most bigoted piece of shit movie we have ever witnessed. I am so excited about this. But if you can't wait that long, don't forget to pick up all your bonus nuggets of scathiasm by liking us on Facebook, following us on Twitter, and subscribing to us on YouTube. Got some super exciting shit coming up on the YouTube channel as well, so get out in front of that. Obviously, the fat lady can't start singing before I thank Heath Enright for never giving me up, Lucinda for never letting me down, and Eli for never running around and hurting me. I need to thank Simo for providing this week's Farnsworth quote in Finnish. And I also want to thank you in advance for your generous donation to ModestNeeds.org. But most of all, of course, I need to thank this week's most dependable diploids, Charles Scott, Bethany, Fred, Pets, Pro Panic, Cam, Jason, Ken, Hardcore, Mr. Blackpool, Matthew, Robert, Craig, Christopher, Justin, Sean, and Mike. Charles Scott, Bethany, Fred, Pets, and Pro Panic, whose gray matter is more tightly packed than a boatload of Syrian refugees, Cam, Jason, Ken, Hakor, Mr. Blackpool, and Matthew, who wear their condoms at half mastering during national tragedies, and Robert, Craig, Christopher, Justin, Sean, and Mike, whose ejaculations trigger Captain Ahab's PTSD, as do their balls. Together, these 18 amiable atheists aided our aims to keep having 18 donors every week, so I don't have to change up my alliteration very often by giving us money. And we thank them. And you can give us money, too, but you already know all about that. If you have questions, comments, or death threats, you'll find all the contact info on the contact page at scathingatheist.com. All the music used in this episode was written and performed by yours truly, and yes, I did have my permission. I'm putting all of that on echoey, by the way, the whole last, that whole last bit. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle in a Thunderstorm, LLC, copyright 2016, all rights reserved.